Right, I'm just going to go through the configuration uh, I've got set up for my DJI F550 uh, hexcopter and uh, how all my uh, electronics all interact with each other and connect. Uh, basically, while I've done it, there are many different ways of doing it, but uh, with trial and error, this is basically how I've done it. Uh, I'm working with a, uh, a four cell battery, which is a uh, four amp hour battery. Uh, and out of there, I've got the uh, the balance lead, which is uh, plugged into the uh, the Fat Shark power distribution or power panel, uh, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you've got three ways of connecting your battery. You can uh, use a 4S uh, balance lead connection, the 3S and the 2S. So it gives you a multitude of ways of uh, connecting it. From that uh, powered board, it goes uh, straight off into the uh, the Fat Shark 5.8 gigahertz, and I've got the uh, 250 milliwatt uh, transmitter here uh, with a Boscam uh, antenna connected. From there, uh, the uh, the transmitter uh, connects back to the uh, the OSD. Now, all I've got connected back is the uh, the positive, the negative, and the uh, video uh, out lead uh, which is shown in white here you can actually connect the uh, audio left and audio right but uh, i haven't bothered because uh, i've got no audio coming back from my uh, from my multi-copter going back to the power uh, the uh, the main battery using an ec5 is going off to the uh, eagle tree e-logger uh, this eagle tree e-logger will actually uh, sense the current draw uh, using this uh, component here and uh, out on the other side you connect your ESC uh, on the uh, DJI F550 this goes to the, uh, the power distribution board on the bottom plate which I haven't connected here because uh, I've crashed mine and I'm uh, waiting for some spares so what I've done here is uh, I've picked up uh, the four cell from the ESC side and just run a lead off here to my uh, 12 volt camera uh, I'm probably overdriving this camera a little bit much, but I tried using a three cell uh, dedicated battery for this camera. It just really wasn't uh, performing that well. So I decided I'll give it a go on 4S and uh, see what it does. It doesn't really overheat and I haven't had any problems yet. Um, so it's working quite well on four cell. So I'll leave it that way until it blows up or uh, I have another crash. All I'm doing uh, for the output of the video, uh, I've just decided to use a single lead. You can for the video in, uh, it has got three pins connected, positive, negative, and video in. Uh, it only gives a five volt, so if you have a five volt camera, you can drive it straight from those pins. But uh, because it's not a five volt camera, I've had to drive it straight from the uh, the four cell battery, uh, or you could use a three cell for this 12 volt camera, but it just didn't seem to perform that well. I tend to get better video uh, clarity with the, uh, the four cell. So coming out of the uh, OSD Pro, there's a connection here, which is just a uh, four wire connection, which uh, goes to your Eagle Tree, which uh, basically your Eagle Tree here can, have multiple uh, inputs, uh, so you can put loads of different types of sensors on here. Uh, but all I've got connected to here is the uh, the Eagle Tree V4 GPS unit, uh, which seems to uh, be pretty good. Uh, it's got a Balem connected on there just to uh, cancel out any uh, electrical interference. Um, I guess it gives a better signal. So that goes into my Eagle Tree. You can see on the e log you've got a uh, mini USB connection here for uh, configuring all your uh, options on your laptop. So you just need a Windows machine and uh, download the uh, Eagle Tree software and you can configure how your display set up and alarms, etc. So on the other side of the Eagle Tree here, I've got the connection to the OSD Pro, which uh, transmits all the data uh, into your OSD display. Now, you've got a video out here, which, uh, so the video comes in here, goes through there, picks up all the OSD, which overlays it onto the video, and then the output goes off to your Fat Shark or whatever transmitter you have for uh, doing your downlink. And say, all I've connected to is my video and my positive and my negative. I've got another connection on here, uh, which is uh, auxiliary one in, uh, which goes back to my Futaba channel six. What I do here, I've got a three-way um, 
switch configured on my transmitter and it means I can while I'm in flight uh, adjust any parameters within the OSD um, so I can turn it on turn it off um, change some other configuration options in there you can do it with the uh, two two-way switches uh, I've decided to do it with a, a single three-way switch uh, which really just cuts down the amount of channels I need because I've got uh, other channels I need to use here such as my loss model alarm and also for uh, my retracts uh, I'll just show my loss model alarm here uh, which is pretty simple so if I lose any signal uh, or I can even flick a switch with that and it send out about an 87 decibel um, noise so uh, that helps uh, retrieve your uh, model if it gets stuck in the bush uh, another thing I've got here is on my Futaba, I'm running SBus, so instead of having uh, all the leads for all the channels, uh, I just have a single SBus connection which goes off to my NASA light uh, into the single X2 port. Uh, the reason I've got my uh, NASA all covered in black plastic is because there are problems. It's got a barometric pressure sensor in here, which uh, seems to be prone to uh, have issues if the sunlight uh, hits it. So uh, I've been reading on certain forums because I've had a few issues where the altitude suddenly drops about three or four meters and I've had a few crashes. Uh, so since fitting this uh, black tape all over it, those issues seem to have disappeared and I don't get any problems caused by uh, covering up uh, the little barometric pressure hole there is a very very small hole in the uh, seam of the box um, but everything seems to work pretty well uh, all I got connected to my NASA is my uh, NASA GPS uh, which sits in this channel and one more connection I've got here is uh, a single connection to my F2 which I programmed back to one of my receiver channels on the knobs so what I can actually do is I've got a um, a two axis gimbal here which I use for my GoPro Hero 3 uh, I have modified it slightly it did it it come from uh, goodluckbuy.com it was only like $50 delivered with free delivery unfortunately it did come with some rather heavy um, cast aluminium uh, brackets here which seem to add quite a lot to the weight I found some old GoPro mounts and I've taken all the uh, cast aluminium off and replaced it with carbon fiber and mounted up the, uh, the control board here so what I can actually do is with another channel uh, on the knob on my radio I can actually uh, adjust the pitch uh, independently of the gimbal so I can actually fly along and decide I want to look up and look down and change the uh, the pitch of the gimbal and that's basically uh, all my setup.